Are we sure that Liz Truss actually exists? Or maybe she's just some bizarre AI experiment which is drastically spiralled out of control. Now, just a little recap. She lasted 44 days, of course, as Prime Minister, the shortest premiership in British history, beating the previous record of George Canning. He actually died, though, of tuberculosis after less than four months in office. Her career died because, well, as PM, she crashed the pound, sent bond yields skyrocketing, nearly collapsed pension funds, hiked mortgage costs, and left the Tories in a state of total implosion. Now, in her desperation, she also fired her Chancellor of the Exchequer, Quasar Kortang, who is her best friend. Not sure how tight they are these days. All in the service, though, of highly virtuous ends, which is slashing taxes on the rich and big business. You might think after all of this, Liz Truss might have some basic respect and, I don't know, enter a witness protection scheme, change her name and identity and flee the country and never be heard of ever again. Not at Liz, though. No. Whatever the opposite of imposter syndrome is, she's got it in spades. And rather than get on her hands and knees and grovel for the damage she's done, she sees herself as a martyr for a greater noble cause, which is... In practice, redistributing wealth and power in favour of the rich. We'll come on to that. And despite having been turned turfed out of office with lower approval ratings amongst British voters than Vladimir Putin, that is not an exaggeration, incidentally. Uh, she sees herself as the ideal spokesperson for this cause. And as somebody who wants nothing more than the complete destruction of free market capitalism, which has brought insecurity and misery uh, to countless numbers of people. I wish her nothing but the best of luck. Now, she went to speak to the Heritage Foundation in the US. If you don't know who they are, oh boy, you're in for a little treat, aren't you? They are a hard right think tank who are throughout their history, for example, fought against LGBTQ rights, against out LGBTQ soldiers in the military, against equal marriage, against protections, against discrimination for LGBTQ workers, against banning conversion therapy. Oh, they're also anti abortion, just general all round delights. I say all this because it's relevant, because Liz Truss ranted against what she called woke and identity politics in her speech. So it's important to know what company she's keeping and uh, who's cheering her on, because they're a bunch of bigots and people who oppose women's rights. There's a particular chunk of her speech I just want to start by zoning in on. Last autumn, I had a major setback. But I care too much to give up on this agenda. I think it's too important. And I know there are others who care too. Oh, bless her heart. Oh, if she's committed a crime, it wasn't hiking millions of mortgage payments during an epic cost of living crisis for perverse ideological reasons. It was just caring. It was just caring too bloody much. How long does sainthood take these days? How was the process? Can we fast track Liz? Anyway, let's just hear some more of her completely loopy speech, shall we? The sad truth is what I think we've seen over the past few years is a new kind of economic model taking hold in our countries, one that's focused on redistributionism, on stagnation, and on the imbuing of woke culture into our businesses. I call these people the anti-growth movement, and they come in many shapes and sizes. There are the vested interests who don't want challenge and don't want competition. They've always been there. But they've been joined by socialists and environmental clothing, who in the name of combating climate change, insist that we should simply stop virtually every kind of economic activity. And then we have the ESG culture, perpetrated by many in big corporations, where the focus is on hitting our diversity target or hitting a social target, rather than actually generating money for employees and for the country. So first off, she said in the speech uh, that we face coordinated resistance, not just from inside the Conservative Party or indeed even inside the British corporate establishment. We face it from the IMF and even President Biden. Sure, it's those bloody lefties, isn't it? And the Conservative Party, the City of London, big business, and the International Monetary Fund that took her down. Raging trots running local Tory branches, hedge funds, and the bond markets. It could be that. That is one explanation. Or maybe when the Tories trashed a golden era of possibility under George Osborne, when the price of borrowing was low, they could have invested at the time without frightening the bond markets instead of doing slash and burn cuts. Um... Since then, uh, borrowing costs have surged. So now if you're going to propose whopping big tax cuts for the rich without 
explaining how they're funded, you're going to freak the markets out. Which is why, for example, a Labour government that wants to change things will have to commit to taxing rich people, something we will cover at length, don't you worry. Now, underpinning Truss's whole ideology is trickle-down, or the Laffer curve, if you want to give that nonsense um, a, a Google. You cut taxes on the rich, it goes the whole spiel. That generates more wealth from which we all benefit. The problem is it, it doesn't actually work, which is, I, I think, a small hiccup, which needs rectifying um, in any ideology. Um, you see, you know, if you take Rishi Sunak, for example, he admitted de facto that it doesn't work because... What George Osborne did for years is cut corporation tax. And the idea behind cutting corporation tax is that it will pay for itself because you'll get more wealth created and that means you don't lose money. But that didn't happen. I mean, companies sat on lots of money, but they didn't invest it. So cutting corporation tax didn't work, which is why Rishi Sunak, who is a right-wing conservative, ended up increasing corporation tax. Ideology collided with political reality. Now, I think it's interesting to look at why exactly Liz Truss is blaming what she calls woke culture. Because actually, in the period in which her ideology has dominated, average growth has fallen. A lot, incidentally. And the smaller growth we've had has been less equitably distributed, which translates as stagnating and falling living standards. And it also saddles households with debt. Now, just a brief, I think we need, you know, she, she was talking about history. She was trying to put this in historical context. Let's try and engage with her in the battle of ideas, shall we, with some facts. Unfortunately, Liz, facts do not care about your feeling, as the, as the uh, phrase goes. So after World War II, you had the post-war consensus in Britain. That meant nationalisation. About a fifth of industry was nationalised. Uh, you had high taxes on the rich. You had strong trade union rights. You had extensive government in, intervention in the economy at various at different levels. You had a welfare state. Um, so you had the, what was kind of welfareist capitalism, essentially, established. Now, what happened? Well, in the 1950s, average growth was 3.2% a year. And bear in mind, because people might go, well, that's because of recovery after, you know, rebuilding after World War II. Well, that's not actually true, because actually we recovered to our previous position, industrial pr um, production, by the early 50s. In any case, actually, average growth was higher in the 1960s. It was 3.4%. So that whole that that whole narrative doesn't work. If it was post-war recovery that was driving economic recovery, why was the 60s more growth than the 50s in this period, as I said, of strong trade unions, extensive state intervention in the economy, and so on? Now, in the 1970s, which is, I think, generally regarded as a really benighted decade, a period of total crisis, economic turmoil, and, and so on. And it was a period of turmoil. You had, firstly, this something called the Bretton Woods uh, system, this international financial framework, which was the linchpin in lots of ways of the international economy after World War II, which was underpinned by the United States. The problem is the United States had decided to engage in the Vietnam War. They got their asses kicked there, if we're going to be brutally honest about it, and they printed money in order to fund the war effort, essentially. Um, and that caused massive pressure on that framework, which collapsed. You also got the oil price shock of the early 1970s, which helped trigger massive inflation, as well as a period of stagnant economic growth. It's called stagflation. So you did have that period of crisis, um, which was then used by the Thatcherites and the Reaganites very very cleverly in order to build a new economic settlement. But in any case, average growth of the 1970s did fall. So it fell, what was the average was 3.4% in the 60s to 2.6%. That is a significant fall. But get this, in the 1980s, when Thatcher did her massive economic counter-revolution, mass privatisation, slashing taxes on the rich and on big business, smashing trade unions, generally just curtailing state intervention in the economy, the same, it was the same average economic growth as this demonised decade, the 1960s, 2.6%. The difference is that growth was less externally distributed, so it was more likely to end up in the pockets of a few. So you had less growth for ordinary people, if you like. Now, in the 1990s, it fell, it fell again on average to 2.2%. In the 2000s, it fell again to 1.8%. And the 2010s, it was almost exactly the same as the weak economic growth of the 2000s. 1.9%, but at least the 2000s had the excuse of the 2008 financial crash, which brought the average down. So ever since we did what, what you could call trisonomics, Reaganism, Thatcherism, that's her ideology, low taxes on the rich, deregulation, privatisation, all the rest of it, growth has fallen and the less growth we have goes to fewer people. She knows this because she's not as stupid as she might make you think. So she invents a nonsense conspiracy theory and said, it's woke what did it. The reason growth has fallen isn't because of the terrible economic policies which the British governments have introduced, Thatcherism. 
Oh God, no, it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with woke. Just just use a label, which in practice means very little uh, because it's been stolen from African-Americans who use the term to be awake to injustice um, and just use it to just explain things which uh, contradicts your entire economic ideology and prove it to be a complete sham. Uh, so as ridiculous and frankly bizarre uh, as Liz Truss actually is, let's not pin all of this on her. It's the ideology that she represents that is the problem. Trussonomics, Reaganomics, Thatcherism, neoliberalism, free market capitalism, whatever you want to call it, it sucks. The results are in. It hasn't worked. It will never work, no matter how much Liz Truss bleats about it to hard right think tanks in the United States. Please like, subscribe, do support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.